In the 4th century BC, legendary philosopher Aristotle described a creature that was straight out of every sailor's nightmare. A creature that was bigger than any other fish in the ocean. A creature with eight arms and with many teeth, and the capability of sinking ships. In the 1st century AD, Pliny the Elder, a Roman historian, described a creature that was suspiciously similar to Aristotle's. Quote, having, again, many, many arms, which were as long as 30 feet, and weighing up to 700 pounds. It was rarely sighted by sailors, but when sailors saw it, they knew they were in trouble. The Norse have a very similar story about a very similar creature, a creature they called the Kraken, a tentacled sea monster that was as big as an island, capable of engulfing and sinking entire ships. Of course, this is just a creature that is fake and imaginary, right? Surely, nothing like this could possibly exist in our oceans. After all, we're so modern and advanced, surely we know basically everything there is to know about the ocean and its creatures. Clearly, the Kraken is a work of fiction. Until, of course, it wasn't. The year was 1873, and two fishermen were fishing off the coast of Newfoundland, when suddenly they were attacked by a literal kraken. One of the arms attempted to drag them into the ocean. Surely, if the creature was able to get him into the water, he would never be seen again. However, one of the men was quick enough to be able to chop off the tentacle with an axe. They were actually able to drag the giant squid ashore and they realized it was 45 feet long. There were a few other encounters with the giant squid leading up to this. A French Corvette ran into one and allegedly recovered one of its tentacles, and another incident in Newfoundland led in the recovery of another tentacle. But at this point, the scientific community could no longer deny the existence of the Kraken. Since these attacks, there are two creatures that could easily uh, qualify as Kraken, the Giant Squid, and the Colossal Squid. Now, let's not make any mistakes here. This is the Kraken. The Kraken went from being a cryptid, a subject of pseudoscience, and, you know, oh, maybe Aristotle, some Greek philosopher mentioned it, but that doesn't make it true. It went from being that to being very, very real, very, very fast. And isn't it hilarious that one of the first instances of the giant squid being officially recognized is when it is literally attacking a ship, trying to drag down a human being into the ocean? The Kraken is a perfect example of something that went from being a cryptid to being a recognized and documented animal. Scientists estimate that the giant squid alone has a massive population. Anywhere between four and 140 million giant squid are estimated to exist in the ocean. That is more than the combined populations of brown and brown bears and moose, and that's even just on the low end. So there are potentially literally over 100 million giant squid on the planet, and it took forever for them to be officially recognized. This is obviously because giant squid and colossal squid live at lower depths of the ocean. Now keep in mind, if the populations of these animals are really north of 100 million, and yet there's only a handful of videos and photos of these things alive, that kind of leaves the door open to more questions, don't you think? What else is down there? What if there's an animal that's more rare yet just as magnificent? What if there's an animal that is even scarier, however, more intelligent? There are many instances of unidentified sea creatures throughout history. One of the more famous incidents has happened in World War I. In 1914, U-Boat 28 was patrolling the Atlantic Ocean, doing the only successful thing the German Navy has ever done, and that is raiding ships with submarines. U-Boat 28 fired upon a cargo ship called the Iberian. It was traveling in between Manchester and Boston. Of course, they sunk the Iberian, considering it was a cargo ship, I mean, that was really the only possible outcome. However, as the Iberian sunk below the ocean, it exploded. Why it exploded is still unknown, although it was probably just one of the steam engines exploding or something like that. When it exploded, a quote, 60 foot crocodile looking creature flew into the air and then landed in the ocean belly up. There were many witnesses to this attack. However, the only living witness after the war was the captain. The other members of the crew were killed later on. So what do we make of this? Well, there's a few questions that come up when we hear about this incident. 
One is, was this alleged giant crocodile in the cargo bay of the Iberian? The answer to this is probably not. Um, there's a whole bunch of reasons why that is. One is, I mean, why would you even want to transport it to America in the first place? Why wouldn't the British want to keep it? Uh, second of all, if they were transporting a giant crocodile, surely this would not be the only instance of this that we would hear about a giant crocodile. So, uh, yeah, there's a whole lot of reasons to believe that this was not um, some giant crocodile that just stowed away on a British ship. It is my personal belief that this was probably just so happened to be in the wrong place in the wrong time. And it probably wasn't a crocodile at all. The crocodile described in the story sounds suspiciously like a mosasaur, a prehistoric species of aquatic reptile. It looked a little bit different than sort of the classic depictions of Loch Ness Monster and things like that. It had a giant crocodile-like face and it had relatively short fins, so it's easy for me to see how a creature like this could have been mistaken to be a crocodile. Now, I am not suggesting that this was an exact one-to-one -one mosasaur. Obviously, we are 60 million years plus since those things have been extinct, so this is probably a more modern creature. However, it is my belief that they probably literally just saw some kind of maybe rare or maybe even now extinct species of mosasaur descendant or mosasaur-looking creature. It's a shame it had to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. This is far from the only ocean-born cryptid, however. I'm sure some of you are familiar with George Wilhelm Steller. He was a famous European explorer, naturalist, botanist, whatever. He documented so much of what we now know as Alaska and Alaska's wildlife. He even has a ton of animals named after him, the Steller's Jay, the Steller Sea Eagle, the Steller Sea Lion, and uh, even the Steller Sea Cow, which is an extinct species of manatee. Very, very tragic. However, there was one animal that Steller documented that is far stranger than the rest, the Steller Sea Ape. George Wilhelm Steller was doing what he did best, mapping the Alaskan coastline and discovering new plant and animal species, all around being very cool. When all of a sudden his ship, the St. Peter, was approached by an incredibly odd animal. He described the animal as being five feet long. It had a long, thick fur coat. It had tail fins that were not like a dolphin, but like a shark, and it had a head like a dog. It also had long, drooping whiskers. Now. This is obviously an incredibly strange animal. No species of sea mammal has the tail of a shark, so incredibly odd. However, it gets its name the sea ape because he observed the animal as being extremely playful and very inquisitive, much like monkeys he had interacted with before. He tried to shoot the creature, however, he missed and the creature swam away. Now, if you do research on Stellar Sea Ape, you're going to find just about everyone say that, oh, he just simply was misidentifying his seal. Considering he has a species from the seal family, the, again, Stellar Sea Otter, considering that's named after him, I find it highly unlikely that he was that dense to misidentify a seal as some crazy looking animal with the tail of a shark and a body of a dogman incredibly strange creature. Personally, I trust Mr. Steller's judgment. This is a man who was smart enough to sail across the world and brave enough to do so. He was smart enough to have multiple species of plants and animals named after him. I trust his judgment. No other sightings of this creature has ever happened. So again, this is probably an incredibly rare creature. And if it is indeed some strange species of animal it probably exists at the lower depths of the alaskan sea so if you're ever in a submarine around the alaskan sea just make sure it's not made out of carbon fiber and go see if you can find one of these the last thing we need to address today is the so-called ocean at night conspiracy theory or the gulf of aden incident now for those of you familiar with the conspiracy theory iceberg you're going to be kind of familiar with this story but let me retell it Basically, the story goes is that at some point in the year 2010, it's either the UN or the US was testing a new kind of nuclear reactor, one that required the entire ocean to cool it. This nuclear reactor was also incredibly bright. When they put this nuclear reactor in the Gulf of Aden, it caused a bunch of earthquakes, and the theory is that it woke something up. It's an incredible story, but is there any backing to this story. 
Unfortunately, I cannot find any references to a nuclear test in the Gulf of Aden. And when I say there's no references, I mean I used web crawler, I used Firefox, I used Google Chrome obviously, I used DuckDuckGo, I used every web browser I could without using Tor, and I couldn't find any references at all, except for the Wendigoon subreddit and some random blogs. However, what I did find was pretty compelling. I found a few websites talk about how there were a ton of magnetic anomalies in the Gulf of Aden, and there still are magnetic anomalies in the Gulf of Aden. And I also found a ton of articles talking about numerous earthquakes and how it is suspicious that right after that, you had one of the biggest naval coalitions in human history come together to fight these pirates off the Gulf of Somalia. Now, I don't question that Somali pirates are real or that we didn't fight them and all of that, but it is suspicious when literally all the competing nations on the planet agree to do something. The only other time I can think of that that really happened was the Antarctic Treaty, but that's a whole video for another day. There is an email chain that must be mentioned, and this is probably the source of the entire Gulf of Aden conspiracy theory. It can be found on WikiLeaks, and it's from a Russian admiral to Vladimir Putin himself. It mentions how underneath the Gulf of Aden there is a stargate, and that there's vortexes all over the Gulf, and it, the admiral is warning Putin that the US and the Chinese are going to team up to fight the monsters that come out, and that of course the world will end in 2012. The reason why I almost didn't mention it is because he sources a very specific website. It is a website that appears to be some kind of Russian equivalent to Infowars, yet even more schizophrenic somehow. So. Um, as much as I would love everything on there to be true, it's probably not. So the fact that a Russian admiral is reading the Russian equivalent of Infowars and then trying to get Vladimir Putin himself to read it is pretty hilarious. So the Gulf of Aden, yes, there are mysterious things going on. However, I think the source of this specific conspiracy theory is uh, not one I would take too seriously. It does not mean that there aren't weird things going on at the bottom of the ocean, though. I have more videos coming up in the works that where I'm going to be talking about a bunch of other strange things that have been happening and continue to happen at the bottom of the ocean. If you'd like to see that, leave a comment. Guys, it was so fun making this video. I love you guys. I'm sorry the content's been slow this summer. Ironically, summer's the worst season to make content just because it gets so jam-packed with family stuff and college stuff or whatever. Anyway, guys, have a wonderful day. If you want to support the channel, go buy a sticker from Civilian Expedition Outfitters in the description, or just subscribe, like, and please leave a comment. Love you guys. Have a wonderful day.